Excuse me, monsieur. Yes? Is this seat taken? No, by all means. Take a seat. What did you say? I said, take a seat. Sit down. Ah, yes. <laughs> I thought you said something else. <laughs> like sheep. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. Uh, Bond. James Bond. Uh, Cousin. Plaisir. Yes. Mm. Uh, it's quite a uh, party. Huh? Ah, oh, yes. Dr. Shark seems to have exceptional taste. Um, you haven't happened to see him, have you? No, no, he... He does not appear to be in the room. Uh, what did you say? I said he is not in the room. Room? Oh, you mean room. Oh, okay. Yes, that is what I've been saying, stupid. Yes, he is not here. Oh. Stupid Englishman. Ah, Scottish to be exact, laddie. Hmm. What a bizarre show. Have you ever wanted to be an international spy? Or have you just wanted to be a contestant on one of those game shows like The Crystal Maze or Fort Boyard? Or have you ever wanted to play a game where the mechanics and the theme matched perfectly? Well in the game Dr Shark it covers all these bases. You all take on roles of 60s style spies and you have infiltrated the party that your evil nemesis nem, nem, evil nemesis that's the word I think well the evil bad guy the, you know those parties that they always seem to have and you're looking for clues for his next deadly plot and these clues come in the style of puzzle pieces and when you put these pieces together you get points but you have to be careful because these clues are hidden in the shark infested pool the number of players will determine the number of rounds that are to be played in the game and they will also determine whether you play individually or as a team and on a player's turn they will be swimming from one area of the swimming pool to another area of the swimming pool and each area has an action and you cannot swim to an area which is already taken by other players and you cannot rest in the same area that you started from you always have to move to another area to take an action Oh, oops! I seem to have dropped my keys in the piscine. I better go and get them. Each action will give you a chance to pull jigsaw puzzle pieces out of a bag. And there are five different colours and there are five different textures. Now you're going to have to believe me on this. There is a texture on the back of each piece. So all the orange playing pieces have a kind of grid-like feel whereas the green pieces all have a felt feel and the pink pieces have a, a rough feel the blue dark blue pieces are smooth and this is the strangest one the light blue has a kind of snake like if you get the light to reflect you can see it there three of these spaces are against the sand timer you have that much time to find as many clues as possible before the castanet gets you there's one space which lets you pull out tiles which are all different textures and as you know each texture is a different colour and if you pull out the wrong the same colour twice your turn ends and you just get to keep the tiles that you pulled out previously if you pull out a tile which has a shark on it your turn ends same thing you get to put the pieces there's another space which lets you find 
all different shaped pieces different. And again, if you find two the same, your turn ends. And then there's also one which lets you find tiles which are the same texture. It's not as easy as it sounds, trust me. And there are two other spaces. One space lets you put your hand in the bag and pull out as many tiles as you want. And then you get to keep one of each colour as long as there's not a shark involved. And the other space just lets you t look into the bag, take your time and pull out one tile that you need. And you get to keep that one tile. Then with all the pieces you've got, you can try and make your puzzles. And if you have a complete one, you take the token which gives you the points. And it also stops people from taking those pieces away from you. What? They can take pieces away from you? Yes! On the back of some of these point tokens is a special power which lets you take tiles from other players or give tiles to other players in exchange for a tile. Now you're probably saying to yourself that this game sounds extremely luck based and you'd be wrong! Because it's not. There are two other sharks that swim in this swimming pool. There's one that's named Luck but there's two others. One's named Strategy and the other one is named Skill. Now the skill is putting your hand into a bag and feeling for the right shape or the right texture that you need to complete your puzzles. And then there is the strategy. Not just the uh, worker placement, where do I go and what action do I take and what action should I use to block another player who's about to play. But there is this reference chart which tells you how many pieces of which puzzle and how many points they're worth and how many pieces they need to be finished. You have to then plan out what's your best route of attack with the pieces that you have. Is it best to go for the low scoring ones which are quite easy to find? Or is it best to go for the high scoring ones which are very hard to find but they give you a good benefit? What do you do? It's, you know, there's these special powers. When do you use it? Well, you've got no choice, really, because you have to use it when you get the points. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, strategy. Now, unlike a lot of games where there's one active player and everyone's twiddling their thumbs, Dr. Shark keeps everyone entertained and amused and absorbed into the game. You're either the active player, or you're the player which is watching the sand timer with the Castanet Shark. You're either also looking at your jigsaw puzzle pieces, looking at the reference sheet, looking at the other players' pieces, seeing who you could steal from and working out your strategy. And the most important thing, everyone is glued to the active player doing a Dr. Evil, wishing that they would fail! <laughs> yeah, whatever. So, to wrap up for Dr. Shark, it is a board game that everyone should be admiring for its ingenious way of mixing a theme and a mechanic together. It works really well. They, Bruno Cathara, Antoine Bowser, two of the probably best designers at this moment in time, have put together a game which is fun for families, very easy to learn, very kind of... There is strategy, um, so... You know, if you are an intense gamer, you can have some fun at the same time. It is an activity, it is a game, it gives me that game show feel. Um, let's talk about the components and stuff. The artwork is this beautiful retro 60s cartoon style, which suits the theme. The box insert, there is no insert, it's just a box. The manual is extremely well written, although, why, why, okay, the components of, there's some good components, like this not really necessary shark, it's just used for when the sand timer runs out, you just go, and then that player has to stop, but unfortunately, my version of the game has a component which has been cut incorrectly, unfortunately, and with all games, uh, the pieces do start to fall apart, which is a shame, because it is a lovely game. It is fun, you can play it at a cocktail party, but the thing is, the only problem with the game is it doesn't have this kind of replayability magnet. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you, you play it and then you, oh, let's play it again. It doesn't do that. 
It is unique. It is something that is like a party trick. You could probably get out at a party and say, look at this game. And people will be stunned and people will adore it because it is adorable. It's not going to be for everybody because of the style of game, but it is well worth, if you're, if you're a collector and you've got nothing like this, you've got to have it. Because it is just, <laughs> it is fun. It's generation game styly. It's it's brilliant. Uh, another drawback is if you are a hardworking man and you've got really tough calluses, you cannot feel the difference between one shape and the other, or the the the, the textures. <laughs> and so you've got no chance of winning. <laughs> but plenty of strategy, light fun, family. I I, I like this game a lot. Although it's not going to appeal to everyone. to my first impressions segment. Now, why do I do a first impressions segment? Well, basically, I do play a lot of games, and you only get to see the ones that I review. And the ones that I review are games that I've played many times. So I've had lots of different experiences with other players and other atmospheres, and so I, and used other strategies as well. Each time I play, I play a different way. Um, so that kind of gives me a good general feel of a game. But on a first impression, some people kind of walk away from a game with a bad first impression and never go back to it. Good example of that is My Sin Mystics for me. My first impression of My Sin Mystics was not too great. But I still have the game and as you can see I've been playing it and things have changed. Now things change due to the fact that rules Sometimes you read the rules and you miss something, or you misinterpret something. Sometimes when you play a game, it's with the people you play with. Some people might not be into the game at all and could be mucking it up for you. Or there could be other things going on which detract from the game and its mechanics and its thing. Now, why do I do a first impression segment? So I can just be vocal about games that I've played and say, I've played that! Yeah. yeah anyway. So I'm going to talk about three games. Three games which all involve ships. So the first game I want to talk about is Alien Frontiers. Now this is a Kickstarter game which started off on uh, Kickstarter and um, it's a dice rolling game and it's a game that I've had a lot of interest in for a long time and I've wanted to play it and I've finally got to play it and it lived up to my expectations. Um, the theme of the game is space and you're trying to colonize a planet uh, and each player has a certain amount of colonies and the person that get rid of all their colonies win, uh, ends the game but not necessarily wins the game. It's a dice rolling game, you roll some dice and then you use the results in certain spaces on the board to either gather resources or to steal resources or to uh, get other dice into your hand so you roll more and more dice or to colonize the planet and while colonizing the planet you can get special abilities which let you change the luck or make it cheaper to buy things because you don't need so many resources and the game is just a, a fun puzzle um, the theme didn't really come through even though you had like alien artifacts that you could buy which give you special powers again like re-rolling or using one less resource when you build whatever um, it was a good game, just not very spacey. It could have been any kind of thing. You could have put um, running a laundrette and, pff, yeah, 
you could have had the same experience. It, it, it was fun, um, you know, making the best of your doubles, your triples, your runs, or just making the best of what you've got. So, um, look out for that. It, I wish it was more available from more retailers, but uh, as it goes, it's... Mm, yeah. The second game is called Legendary Encounters, and it's based on the Alien series of films. It's a deck building game where uh, you would play a start with the same cards, apart from one, because you take a, a personality at the beginning. Uh, you could be a medic, and we could be a grunt, or you could be a captain or corporal. And each one of these cards, you put that into your deck, and it gives you a special power, uh, an ability, which you can't get in the other decks, which is great. And you basically pick a scenario, uh, and there's the four scenarios of the film. And I played the first one, which was on the Nostramo, Nostrami, Pastrami, yeah, you know, with uh, Captain Dallas, that one, the first film, the, yeah, that one, okay, and um, you basically have objectives, um, so like you've got to find uh, the passcodes to, to close the airlock, something like that, and you have this deck of cards which continuously are approaching you, you can scan uh, the areas, uh, to see what kind of card it is. It could be an alien, which means you could attack it um, before it gets a chance to attack you. Or it could be an objective, it could be an event, it could be a character as well. There was Ash, and he was quite violent and quite hard to kill because you think you need two people to kill him at the same time. So you, you can It's a cooperative game. You can play cards on other people's turns. You can say, oh, I can help you out, I can lend you some money. Um, oh, I can, uh, I can help you out with a bit of an attack. And you're buying cards to put into your deck, but these aliens are coming towards you and attacking you. You have a certain amount of life points. And the object is just to get to the end of the game. And it felt fantastic. It had that feel of aliens. And Alien, and Alien 3, and Alien Resurrection. It was... Incredible. The art style is all from the comic books, and I've got quite a lot of those alien comic books, and so it, it, it fitted in just fine for me. So if you're a fan of deck building and you're a fan of alien, this game is got your name written on it, and you should go out and, and, and give it a cuddle and take it to bed with you, because that's what I want to do now. And I want to play it again! He said, spitting everywhere. And third and finally, the big Space Cowboys game, Black Fleet. Yes, that's got ships in it as well. They're not spaceships, but they're ships anyway. And um, basically, uh, the players have a pirate ship and a merchant ship that they control. And there's also there's, there's these couple of um, naval ships which everybody controls. And the object of the game is to f buy all your special powers and... You do that by taking your merchant ship and getting them to deliver stuff to other ports to get money. Using your pirate ships to attack other people's merchant ships to get money and to steal their, their stuff that they carry in. And then to use the, the naval ships to attack the pirate ships to get money as well. Yeah, and this is all done with some cards. And you basically choose a card, and on the card it has the three ships and then you choose, and it says how many spaces they move, and then you just move them around the board. So everyone is moving stuff around and uh, being nice to one person one minute and then stabbing them in the back of the next. It's that kind of game. It's family friendly. It's very easy to learn. Um, doesn't have the same... It's meant to have the same kind of feel as Escape from Atlantis, but... Uh, I can't see what the big hype about Black Fleet is at the moment. No, it was okay, it was quick, it was easy, it was fun, but mm, with the hype that people have been going on about it, uh, it's okay. I'd recommend it, but I prefer the island. So there you go, there's my first impression of three games. Woohoo! Go, go, go here, isn't it? What do you think? Do you think that a game should be judged on its first impression? Or should it be considered after several, maybe multiple times of playing. Hmm. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think I'm crazy? Yes. Anyway. Anywho. Anywho. Until next time. Um, have a nice Christmas. 
to Christmas when ready. Illustrious. He's an illustrious horse. Yes, Dr. Shock. He seems to have an exemplary taste. Hmm. It's like a Ferrero Rocher effort. <laughs>